All right, guys, just rolled up on site at the customer's home. I'm gonna take you inside and show you what is up. Let's check it out. Okay, guys, just arrived on site at the customer's home. And you can see, not quite as far along as I had expected. We had a little miscommunication, but I'm gonna kind of walk you through what has been done already as well as what our future plans are. So, got our installers here, ready to do, do some work. We're going to be taking all of the locations where the wiring is pre-wired and terminating the wiring as well as connecting the speakers, hooking everything up. I can't really do the optimization of the sound yet just because we have no carpet and he's not completely finished, but he's really excited to use this space. So we're gonna do our best to get everything hooked up today and get it operational and then we'll come back for a follow-up visit but here's the game plan we're going to have a front left speaker here front right speaker here center speaker here and then we're going to have a nice big 120 cinescope si slate screen here and this is just an access panel I'm gonna, if you guys haven't seen the other video of this room being built, you should check it out. I mean, this guy worked wonders with this space, uh, really maximized the potential. We have, you can see right here, we have it marked out on the floor where our Atma speakers are going. So right here, we're gonna have one right in line with that can and the other one right here in line with that can. And then first around, we're gonna have one right here at ear level and another one here at ear level. And then back of the room, there was, again, you have to see this video of uh, what had to be done for this room to be created. But uh, there was a lot of plumbing and electrical and things that need to be moved. So we can't really put a speaker right here at ear level for our surround rears. So we're going to put them up here. It's not perfect it's not an ideal situation but we're gonna rotate the horn downwards towards the target seating area so this configuration oh and there's gonna be two subs one sub back here and another sub here so this configuration is called a 7.2.2 Dolby Atmos system and we're gonna be using the slate 1.2 120 inch 235 screen with a Epson 6050 e-shift 4k projector so i'm going to kind of show you guys some of the installation procedures that we do and show you the completed work i will also make a, another video of the follow-up visit so make sure to check that out once we get our curtains up and the acoustic treatments on the wall and carpet to optimize the sound hope you guys like this video all right guys so this is the uh, pro 16 RW from Klipsch. It's the Pro Series that came out last year. I was talking about how we can rotate the horn downwards. Um, we can also rotate the horn towards our target seating area for the surrounds. This is a great speaker design. I like how it's a two-piece too. Look how you can separate it out. You couldn't really do this before. Well, you couldn't do this at all, actually, with the old reference series. It makes installation really quick because it's, it's a two-piece design. You can install this first, and then the speaker just pops right into place. It's a really good quality speaker. Very well-built, world-renowned brand. Really can't beat it. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and start buttoning everything down. I like to start in the corners so that it stretches evenly. So you're gonna take corner pieces. And then you can start lining up all of your buttons and then go to the other corner. Do the same thing. Let's 
it's normal to have to put a little bit of pressure on it. So don't be intimidated. You don't want to rip the screen though, so you got to find that, that good balance. Okay, so that concludes the assembly and I'll show you guys here shortly how you mount it to the wall. Okay, so we just talked with the customer and we decided instead of doing the two inches on the top, um, we're gonna split the gap and make it perfectly centered between the top and the bottom. So we're gonna redo those measurements right now. Okay guys, so we're about to uh, mount these brackets into the wall for the screen. And we just wanna make sure where we're mounting it is the best location, so, or in the exact location really. So we just wanna, on this screen, check to, to make sure that it's gonna line up. Like on the zero edge screens, there's like a three and a quarter inch gap between where this mounts and the top of the screen, but this one, it just goes right into the top. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, we're just gonna compensate for that extra little quarter inch right there whenever we go to mount it to the wall. But it's something to notate if you're gonna be very particular and get the exact measurement that you're going for. All right, we got all our plates on there, brackets mounted to the wall, let's throw this bad boy up. Think you're in all the way? Trade me. There we go. That's it. That was easy. <laughs> Very easy. Okay. So the next thing that we're gonna check guys is we wanna make sure that this screen is level across the top. And most importantly, honestly, the same distance left to right from the ceiling because a lot of the time these houses basements like this are not framed completely straight so we're just going to check that out make sure everything's centered up and looking good this is a close-up of the screen And one little side note, this is sold in a zero edge as well with the backlit LED kit. The fabric is key, guys. Uh, the, the fixed material, what we have here, is gonna be your best value overall. You're, you're getting the best material without paying the extra for the frame, but we do have the zero edge frame with the LED kit on it as well. So make sure to inquire about that whenever you're calling in, guys. Okay, so we're gonna strip back our speaker wires now and make some connections. You're just gonna go like, take the outer shielding off first, like that. And then you're gonna strip back the conductor on the actual strands. You only need about a quarter of an inch, like that. And then you can twist them together so they go into the terminals a little bit easier. Now we're gonna go around the whole room and do that. And you're gonna do it to the other side as well so that you can do a tone test on it. Oh, he ran two speaker wires to all of them. Yeah, you don't need them, right? But I thought it gives extra power, or what's it do? It, I mean, I, I remember having this conversation with you now. Um, the thicker the gauge, the longer the distance uh, you can run. It? Just distance? Yeah, well, if it, in like really, really high-fi situations, you know, you can get solid core which is gonna allow the signal to transfer more smoothly through the line. But when we're talking about stranded wire, <laughs> yeah, it's not really, not really gonna make a difference. Well, you know, one benefit it could be for these towers is you could buy amp them down the road. What does that mean? Additional power. More power. Yeah. Okay guys, right now we're just working on making all of our connections. Basically just twisting the red to the red, the black to the black. Uh, it's very simple. Okay, I'm making my connections right now to the RP6000Fs and I wanted to kind of go over options for connecting this. You got, see this plate right here in between? 
This is essentially just transferring the power between the high frequency and the low frequency. Um, you can also buy amp your system to where you're taking one individual amplifier to the high frequency and one individual amplifier to the low frequency. In this situation, because all the amps are used on the 9.2 for the 7.2.2 Atmos configuration, we're gonna leave these plates in so that the power is transferred to both high frequency and low frequency at the exact same time. And that's it. Like I was uh, stating during the unboxing video, uh, this is a ported speaker, so it's, it's actually moving air through here. So we're gonna wanna give it just a little bit of space off the wall so that it can breathe and perform to its maximum potential. All right, we're getting our blanket laid out now, and we're gonna start sketching out exactly where we're gonna put this surround speaker. Okay guys, so we are moving right along and we're gonna work on our surround speakers. I just measured from the front of the room, 150 inches this way. And we went 45 inches up because if you look back there, there's our theater chairs. We want the speaker to be right above ear level when you're sitting down. So it's gonna go right in here. Um, and same thing over on this side. We're going to be putting it right here. And that's 150 inches from there. So they'll line up straight. So you're just going to take your, your sheetrock knife and cut out your hole. Take your sheetrock out. You don't want to really leave it in there. It's just going to reverberate and cause problems. So as you get down to the end, just slow and easy. And see what's nice with this speaker is how you can rotate that horn. In this situation, the customer is going to be sitting right here, so it's perfect. But in this situation behind me, we're going to be able to directionally point that audio where we need it to go. These grills are also paintable. You can see this customer did paint the grill to where it looks great. Just blends right in with the wall. And these are magnetic. You get a really nice clean finish. And again, one more time, let's use our level. Okay guys, so we're moving on to installing the surround back speakers. You can see we just put in a couple little test holes so we get our hand in there and make sure that we're not gonna hit any of the studs and now i'm going to trace out exactly where it's going to go and then i'm going to cut the hole and works as a little handle too <laughs> okay so we're basically going to go do the same thing on the other side Grab that grill for me. We are level. Horn is rotated down towards our target seating area. We're gonna throw the cover on there and we'll be on to the end ceilings. Blinded by the light. Can't see anything. 
Corona doesn't get me all this drywall dust well. <laughs> There we go. What in the world is that? Oh, the electrical box. All right, same deal here. I'm gonna strip it back and pop that speaker in. Do the same thing here and there. All right, second Atmos speaker in there. Okay guys, so we are moving on to mounting the projector. We just measured out the center of the room again, just to confirm, and we marked it out on the ceiling. We also found where the joist is in the ceiling. And what we're doing, if you look, we have the left side, the side closest to us right now, into the stud, and we're working on putting in a toggle on the other side, which is gonna expand into the ceiling and make it to where that projector isn't going to go anywhere. And then, of course, we'll really secure down the ones that are into the wood, the stud. You always want to be into at least one stud. The reason that we're not mounting it, just two of them into the stud uh, vertically, is because we want to make sure that the projector lens is center with the projector screen so that we don't get a keystone left to right. Might need a thicker. Yeah, a different trumpet. So uh, eventually we're gonna get that up in there and then we're gonna <laughs> screw the lags into the beam. So I'll, I'll show you whenever we're done. We're burning real here. Boom, that thing is not going anywhere. Nice work. So now we're gonna take our pole right here and we're just gonna screw that right into the top plate. Perfect. And then there's one little screw up there that you need to tighten down after you get it in place. That, that can be one of the last things you do, but it's just an extra safety thing. You can uh, tighten down just so that it clamps the top plate to the pole. We're gonna go ahead and throw the projector up there. All right, guys, check it out. This thing is looking clean. We got the back cover on there. We are about to crank it up and then I'll show you how to do the alignment. So one of the first things you can do while it's starting up is grab your nifty level. We gotta make sure that this projector is level front to back. That is one of the biggest things that people fail at. And you can see right off the bat, this guy is not level. So we're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so we got our screwdriver and we're loosening up our roll. It goes front, back, and side to side. Our main issue right now is front to back and that's really what I want you guys to focus on initially is making sure front to back the unit's level. This Epson 6050 that we're using here has lens shift. So even though if you look over here, the picture is not 
you know, lining up straight, it's okay because we can go in and motorize with the motor, we can move it into place. So we're gonna go ahead and exit out of this main menu. And now I'm gonna show you guys what is actually on the screen. So the first thing you wanna do is flip your image. So we're gonna go to menu and go down until you get to, what does that say? Extended. And then you're gonna click into it and go to projection and go to front ceiling. So now it's flipped to where you can actually see what you're doing. Um, exit out of that and go to pattern. Pattern will throw a test pattern onto the wall so you can kind of see what's going on. And then you're gonna hit lens and hit lens again and hit lens again. It is now inverted, so we want to select yes, inverted, and see now we can move it right where we want it. And you can see it is not level front to back, or I mean side to side. So we're gonna have to now level it to the screen side to side, which I will do. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and Jiggle it a little, get that perfect. And now, uh, right now the projector is sitting fairly center, but if you look real close on the left side, it's a little bit lower. So I wanna give you guys an example of what most of you are running into. If you go like this, See how the image drops even more on the bottom left? Well, the key is, is that the projector is level front to back and the projector is also firing straight ahead. That's what gives you that nice square image. So you physically, once you have the top level, need to move the projector into place to where it lines up perfect. I'm gonna zoom out. Now that is about as precise as you can get on, whoop, on a 235 screen. You can see it's bleeding over top and bottom. That's for 16 by nine, which that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> so I don't wanna make this a one hour long video. So I'll break that into a separate video for you guys showing you how you actually set the Epson 6050 to 235 and 169 formatting. But for purposes of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and focus it and call it a wrap. So to focus it, you just go back and forth till you see it gets a little blurry and then it'll get super sharp. And then as soon as it starts to get a little blurry again, you go back and that's when you know you found your sweet spot. Just because I'm particular, if you notice the, the top left is just a little bit low, I'll want to move that up as well. But you guys get the idea uh, for this video. I'm going to play with it a little bit and just get it perfect. All right, guys, another late night getting the theater set up, making sure that customer is happy and thrilled with their system. Everything just turned out beautifully. We got the Epson Pro Cinema 6050 up here. Let me give you guys an up close shot here of everything finished off. Now we will be back to visit this theater room so make sure to stay tuned to the channel after we get carpeting and drapes to really maximize the experience um, you can see it's not totally finished and it's really affecting our acoustics so keep that in mind but we do have our um, surround left surround rear left surround rear right and surround right as well as our overhead atmos up here in the ceiling all set up and we're just waiting for the room to be finished up. We got our RP 6000 Fs here at the front of the room, the RP 504C and the uh, SPL 120s, two of them with the 120.235 Slate 1.2 Screen Innovations fixed frame screen. This turned out awesome. Playing a demo for you guys so that you can really see the the system. I hope that you enjoyed this video and found it informative and in helping you make a buying decision. If you guys would like to purchase, make sure to give us a call 
shoot us an email, show your support. It means the world to us. This is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.